Hi, I'm Alastair, I'm a games designer, and in this video I'd like to describe how I've been using artificial intelligence to create puzzle art, as you can see on the right hand side. Now over the last few years, generative AI tools such as ChatGPT, Midjourney and DALI have completely disrupted the creative world. AI algorithms can now write novels, compose music, code computer programs or generate images and video with barely any effort or human input required. Now there's still a lot of contentious ethical and legal issues surrounding AI generated art, but I was particularly interested to investigate whether AI could generate an image not only based on some aesthetic artistic criteria, but to guide its form to create an ambiguous image or optical illusion an image that can be viewed in different ways to show different subjects, and for those to be completely novel images that have never existed before. Now, artists have been creating optical illusions for a very long time. Hans Holbein incorporated an anamorphic distorted skull in his painting of the Ambassadors 500 years ago. In modern day, you might have seen an ambigram tattoo design that reads different words when viewed upside down. But these are very hard designs to create, and I think it's the sort of task that an AI would excel at. So, the illusions you've been seeing were generated on my own desktop PC using a Python script and an AI model called Deep Floyd. Deep Floyd is freely available and published by Stability AI the same company that created Stable Diffusion. Now the reason why I'm using Deep Floyd rather than Stable Diffusion or one of the other more well-known AI generators like Midjourney is because those are latent diffusion models. Their understanding of what an image looks like is based on a mathematical model in latent space, kind of like an abstract formula in which the value of different variables describe different features of the image. Deep Floyd, in contrast, is a pixel diffusion model, so it classifies images directly based on the pixel data in the image, and that's what we need to generate optical illusions, so that the AI algorithm sees the image the same way that we do. Now, everything I've done is based on the work of two master's students at the University of Michigan, who published this paper and also generously supplied the code on which it was based. Now I forked that code into my own GitHub repository and I'll put a link to that in the description below, which contains all of the code examples and the instructions used to create the images shown in this video. So how does it work? Well, firstly, we need to specify the different views that we want the image to portray. So let's say we want a picture of a penguin. That's the default image, which we'll call the identity view. But when we flip the image upside down, we want it to look like a banana. So that's another view of the same image. And maybe when we invert the colors, we want it to resemble a teapot. So that's a third view of the image. And you can define as many different views as you want. Each one specifies a transformation that's been done to the pixel data in the image and a prompt describing what the image then resembles. And what the Deep Floyd AI algorithm then does is it starts with a canvas filled with random noise. And then it iteratively refines that noisy image, removing the noise gradually, to try to create the images in all of the specified views in parallel. So it tries to work out which pixels do I need to adjust in this image to make it look more like a penguin, but also more like an upside down banana and also like an inverted teapot all at the same time. And sometimes that can be really hard to do. You can't easily make a picture of a red balloon that also looks like a yellow trumpet. However you rotate it, it's not going to look like that. And so you have to do a bit of experimentation, but you can also get some great results. You'll notice that a lot of the examples I've shown use somewhat abstract painting styles like watercolour or sketches, as you'll find it easier to blend subjects together using those compared to if you try to make a photorealistic style image. So if you're interested in trying this out, I encourage you to check out the code linked below and let me know if you have any questions or do please show me if you create any illusions using this technique. 
Okay, cheers. Bye.